that button there, and then I'm recording. Wow. Cool. Nice camera. Mm. So you're in prison in Colombia? Oh, only for a minute down there. God, it was just crazy. That, that, just, I was only in there for like nine days, but God, I almost starved to death down there now. What? What's it like in the in the prison there? It was really crowded. Like everybody couldn't lay down at once. You know, you had to split shift floor space. So then you had to stand up. And then you had to put the newspapers under the bar so the rats would run down and not run in your cell at night. And then they gave you one bowl of rice and beans a day, and it wasn't very big. I and mean, unless you had family bringing you food in there, you starved to death. So a little Colombian kid's family took refuge on me, and they wouldn't let me call anybody. It was fucked. I flew down there to meet these two Colombian brothers to pick up a load of Santa Marta Red. And I flew into Rio Acha. Santa Marta Red. What was that? Weed? Yeah. And uh, and the two brothers said that, you know, you'd meet them at this little bar, so I landed, tied the plane down, went to the bar in a cab, got there, they were sitting in the back of the corner, I went back there and sat with them, everything was fine. Right. Yeah, I mean, like, everything seemed like everything was fine. They were talking about the deal and how much money they needed and blah, 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 and I had the money in the plane, so I said, okay, well, that works, and next thing I know, they stood up guns blazing and had a gun battle right there with three guys that come through the front of the bar door, and I said, god damn, I took off running and ran for the plane. I'm unchalking the wheels, and the fucking Jeep showed up with the DOS police, which is a tough group of mil military police in the Colombian government. They're really after drug dealers and smugglers and shit like that. That's called the DOS, D-A-S. Okay. And they snatched me up and threw me in the Rio Lacha prison right there, right next to a meat plant where they processed meat. And down there, they'd take the guts and everything and throw it out the back window. It was like a two-story high pile of meat guts. It's horrible. Flies. No glass on any of the windows, just bars. Wow. Flies, flies, and the stench. It was horrible. And they wouldn't let me call anybody. And then finally, my friend Chris decided that I was gone too long, and he came looking for me. And he actually paid somebody, and I got up out of the Rio Acha jail, got in the plane, and went home. <laughs> I said, God damn, boy, that sucked. Wow. Yeah. And then, uh, I got to tell you, remember I told you I went to the flight school, the DEA flight school out at Oklahoma City out there? Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, and I flew Billy Shackley, which was a government operative around, and he had me, back then the government was figuring out that cocaine sales could back a lot of their black ops going on in the background. So the senators and everybody and congressmen were all behind this cocaine smuggling coming up into the states because they were making all this hokey doke money for the Nicaragua Contras and all of that crap. So right. They had to go to Columbia and they had to deal with 15 people to get a ton of cocaine. So our government said, oh, that ain't working. We're going to have to... We're going to have to get them all on the same page. Well, we have some big dealers like Louie Ochoa and Pablo Escobar. We can go deal with them direct. Well, somehow that wasn't enough for the United States government. They wanted to go down there and create a rogue group called M-19 that went around blowing up Louie Ochoa's planes and Pablo Escobar's shit. And I mean, like, they were just being real roguish and trying to force them into signing this Magna Carta so the government could go down and deal with just one person to buy two tons of cocaine instead of 50 people, you understand? So they went down there and pushed these higher-up cartel already members that just didn't want to bend into the program of signing a Magna Carta with the U.S. government for cocaine. So they were fighting it bad. That's why the government went down and pushed this M-19 group into existence. And... Uh, and uh, Billy, they, uh, Louis Ochoa wouldn't sign the contract. He said, fuck you all, and he fought like hell, boy. So our government decided to go do something, so Billy had me fly him down to Bogota, and I forgot Bogota was a mile high, 
as soon as I got there, I was trying to land, the plane was doing all kinds of weird shit. I said, what the fuck? And then I realized I was at the altimeter, and there we were, you know, 7,000 foot. <laughs> You're going, God damn, no wonder the motor ain't running right. So I adjusted the manifold pressure and adjusted it, and we landed there in Bogota. Next thing I know, Billy's got a band passed to him. And we went and kidnapped Louie Ochoa's daughter out of the college, right there off the sidewalk with the band. Put, put things over her head, dragged her to the runway, threw her on the plane, and we landed in Panama. We had a field to land in, and it was a little crash, it was hot there. And there was nothing there but jungle, really short, carved out strip. We flew in there, and we held on to Lucinda Ochoa, which was Louie Ochoa's daughter. We held on to her for like four or five days, and then we heard that we were supposed to hang on to her a little bit longer. Well, one day, Billy was watching her in the radio shack, I call it. It was like a Gilligan's Island hut or McHale's Navy hut, you know, it was like that. <laughs> I was walking by it, and I heard grunting and groaning, and I said, what the fuck? I said, God damn. Billy come out. I said, have you lost your fucking mind, bro? I said, it's bad enough. We took his daughter. Now you're fucking his daughter. I said, what is wrong with you, Billy? I really like the girl, man. Well, I really... I said, ah, wait, Billy, God damn, let's complicate this just a little bit more. So finally, back then was with Manuel Noriega, the government was going to get all the cartel members to meet in Panama City. So Manuel Noriega said okay and allowed all these Colombian big wig cartel members to show up to agree with our government on how to smuggle the cocaine into the state where our government could make money. So poor Manuel had never had anything to do with the drug trading. He was a, a leader and trying to be a good one of his country, right? So he meets these guys and they offer him the world for using Panama as a midpoint, you know what I mean, so they can stop and do and keep their product going north and you know, right. so he took advantage of the money that was being passed to him and our government's the one that introduced them all together, which is sad. So then we released Lucinda and she went back to Columbia and, uh, and it was pretty crazy because a few months later she came to Miami <clears throat> and, uh, and uh, Billy met her and Billy and her got married a few months later and uh, right now he quit being government agent. As soon as he got married, he stopped doing all that shit. Uh, Louis got killed, so there wasn't any daddy problems in the background, but Lucinda had a pocket full of money. So him and Billy got to her and Billy got together, got married, and had three beautiful children, bought a beautiful home down there in Biscayne Bay, and they're still there today. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, what a story, huh? <laughs> yeah, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Yes, sir, it was. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, well, that's the way it was. So. And then, you know, our government, the great white, white lie would tell you a story about... Now, what what, what was the... We'll go ahead with that. You know, well, it's just the, the Loran Towers ran out. So going between Cuba and Colombia, it was just a free-for-all on the flight. There was no guidance tower there along the coast. It needed to be in Costa Rica or in that region. Well, you know, Costa Rica is a friendly country, so they donated a piece of land, and then a group of Seabees went down there, actually, and erected the tower for the Lorans. So all, not for commercial airline flights, but for American airplanes to go down and pick up loads of dope and bring back to the States for the government. Thus was uh, Hoff and Snuff, um I mean, there's, there's numerous names of people that's been arrested for big-time smuggling and got involved with the government down there. I can't think of all the names right now, but, I mean, Christ, there's was, there was 15 people right there in a row that got had, you know, just, and they were just bringing it right in for the government. So, it was pretty crazy how wow. that was going. Yeah, it was. It was insane. And right up until just a few years ago, and they're still doing it today. I mean, case in point. Fucking CIA jet with four tons of cocaine on it crashes. Oh, that's not a just a fluke thing. That goes on all the time. Right. I mean, it wasn't like that's that. That's right. I remember that story. Uh, yeah. That wasn't the first time that a plane's crashed with CIA 
connections full of dope. Oh, yeah. So they were running lots of dope just to cover all the black ops. Well, my, my buddy Nikolai said they he, he saw them loading body bags full of coke right out of Vietnam. Oh, yeah. The heroin over there. there. Uh, what, whatever it was, they were... They, they had body bags. Yeah, yeah. They, they've been doing it every war because you know, in every... They do it all the time, just to huh. pay for their operations that the taxpayers don't want to hear about. So, pretty insane. I think it's so <clears throat> So, tell me about the Nicaraguan War, because I wasn't... I don't remember much of that. Well, that in the you had the Sandistas. There were so many different parts. There, right there was there. three different factions that Actually. wanted a different kind of government. So our government was back in one, the Soviets was back in the other, and then there was just the civilian population that wanted to be left the fuck alone and stop all this shit. We like what we had. Or whatever you call them. Yeah, well, they weren't rebels. They were straight up patriots for their country. Oh. So then you had three factions just bumping heads and fighting, and nobody knew who was who or what was what. It was just whoever you bumped into, it was a gunfight. I mean, there wasn't any discussion. It was just like well, crazy. The That's Nicaragua the one who was here in America. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Oh, okay, America. and then so, the who, who was who was the guy that uh, that the U.S. government tried to nail for helping the Contras running the uh, the guns. Uh, Oh, I can't think. Uh, fuck. Ollie North. Ollie North. Well, well, fucking Colonel North. God damn, he's a hero in my book. And he, no, he is. I got in trouble he with is. Bill Clinton over bullshit. Ollie North one day. How did you get in trouble with Bill Clinton? Uh, I got invited to play golf with uh, governor of the state of Arkansas. He was governor. At the yeah, time. he was the governor. And then I got in Ollie North and a couple other high up officials and they... And Billy Shackley, and I got invited, so I went out to the golf course with Bill Clinton and his entourage of state police bodyguards and Ollie North, and and everybody was talking and chit-chatting and blah, 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 and the next thing I know, Ollie went up to get a shot, and Bill ran his fucking mouth. I looked at Bill, and I slapped him right in the fucking head. I said, why don't you say that to the man when he's standing here in front of you, you cocksucker, instead of saying that shit behind his back. You know, they always have state patrol. Well, so the sergeant of the state patrol come over and grab me up. And he says, no, 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 it was just a misunderstanding on the golf game. He goes, I'm employed by you to protect you. This man struck you. I have to arrest him. So I got arrested for slapping Bill Clinton, and they gave me a five-year sentence on top of all the rest of the shit they had me for for slapping Bill Clinton. Yeah, because I didn't like what he said about Ollie North, because Ollie's a stand-up fucking Marine. He was always a good man, and then the government, the way they tweaked it, twisted it, right. what the fuck? Right, that was so pathetic. They put him under the gun, under the bus, well, under I the train, and they just ran over that man, man. He was a fucking phenomenal I Marine. I watched all those um, yeah, well, hearings uh, with him. Yeah, well. It was so sad. Was yeah, really well. Sad. It was just all crazy. I mean, it was yeah, just it was that crazy the whole time. thing was crazy because at that time, the Bushes and the fucking Clintons were running. The uh, show. Well, Bush had a truck driving school out in uh, 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 El Negro, Texas, and he had these trucks running everywhere, and they were landing in Black Rock, Arkansas, out there. And they were landing out there at the runways and up there in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and they were trucking it with these big semis that belonged to the Bush and Clintons, and, wow, I mean, it was, it's been going on forever. I mean, even, and if you look at the history of the Clintons, holy fuck, the people that died in Arkansas because of oh their smuggling. Oh, my God, there's a blood trail with those There's like 35 people that died while the Clintons were in rain. I mean, Hillary... What's so crazy, though, is a guy that they found in a dumpster I'll never forget. He was a um, some cyber security, real big wig, and I mean, you could tell you, he was found in the dumpster in New York, boop, behind an alley. Well, that's like the... I like, mean, a big wig. Like when they were in and rain... it disappeared, that was it. But when, when they were in the rain in the White House, one of their advisors ended up crashing a plane in Oklahoma and dying. And they all felt really bad about it. The guy's family said the boy never flew. He never had a pilot's license. 
He had no inclination to want to fly a plane. So the government's answer to that was, no, that explains his death. He didn't know how to fly. <laughs> and a woman that formerly worked for Hillary, she turned Republican and became, uh, there were two senators, anyway, she, that woman and another senator, I think it was from Kansas, and a day apart, not even 24 hours, oh, they just killed themselves. Yeah, there were so many suicides of their su personal they aides while they were in... And she used to uh, work under Hillary. It was crazy. Th that era of, of the world was pretty insane way back then. It's still crazy now. That's oh. why I, it's just everything going on in Washington right now ain't no big surprise. But I mean, the blood <laughs> trail keeps on going, doesn't it? It just doesn't yeah. end. It doesn't. So... And then they hunted all the drug lords, Pablo and all the rest of them down there in Columbia, and murdered and killed them all, and then and just somebody bullshit. else took over. I mean, bullshit. it didn't do anything. It just somebody else grabbed the reins nothing. and took over. Didn't change nothing, didn't stop, no, no drugs, didn't stop. No, because our own government wants it to keep going. Look, Pablo Escobar went to the Colombian government with a tractor trailer truck, truck full of money, Todd, and told them, I'll pay off the national deficit if you leave me alone. He went to the courthouse with the tractor trailer truck full of money to pay off the national deficit of Columbia. That's how yeah. much money they had. <coughs> yeah, I just Look, can't. when I went to the federal prison, I met a guy. He found out that I was a pilot and I'd been involved and blah, blah, blah. And he was a Colombian guy, right? And it was, uh, it was, uh, fuck. Uh, I'm horrible with fucking names. I can see his face and everything. Memory, so. He, uh, I'd have to look it up. Boy, god damn, I can't remember it right now. But he liked me a lot and, you know, we talked and then. When he got out, I was out, and we talked some more, and he said, you need to come to Columbia. I'm going to down there. I'm going to be the biggest drug lord there ever was, and we could use somebody like you, Rick. So I got an invitation to go down, and I ended up flying into this little field, and, and his new Ford pickup trucks and Broncos come out there to pick me up, and they took me back to this fucking mansion, and there he was, standing on the steps. And I'm sorry, I can't remember his fucking name right now, but I will. And he, he greeted me, and I said, wow, whose house is this? He goes, it's mine, Rick. I said, wow. He goes, look, come on in. I'm busy right now. He goes, I'm going to let you go out by the pool for a minute. He goes, and while you're out by the pool, just enjoy, get a drink. I'll have somebody there with you. And then when we're done in here, you can come back in. And I said, okay, because there was all kinds of men in there I didn't know. And so I went out by the pool, and the security guard was speaking fairly good English, right? And I'm sitting there and I got a high ball and the jungle had grown right up next to the pool. I mean, like within two feet of the pool, it was just straight jungle. I mean, nobody huh. done any yard work out there for Wow. Well, I'm going, wow. And then I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I smell this rotted, stinking mess. Is that a snake? I said, no. I said, what is that? I said to the security guard, he goes, oh, senor. He goes, see that little shack right there? And there, you can see a maybe a 24 foot by 10 foot shed there that the roof had fallen in and the door was off the hinges and it was old wood and you know kind of weathered and I said well I said what's causing the stink he goes come see he goes come see you're not going to believe this come see <laughs> and we walked and he opened the door and I went inside and there was boxes of money that was molded wet dripping stinking shit Boxes of money, Canadian and American bills, just laying there, rotting into the jungle. I said, why? He goes, they make so much money, they can't, they, can, they just can't spend yeah. it. I mean, that would that's when I said, that, that's, I'm, I'm getting some of this now. So <laughs> that's when I went out to see him, and I, boy, it kills me, I can't think of his name, because he ended up snitching on everybody and running for his life and lived in Sweden for a while until they assassinated him. He ended up getting killed off the steps there in Switzerland, but I mean... Wow. Yeah, him and his wife both were on the run, but he was... I 
Jesus Christ, it wow. bothers me. I can't remember his name. Anyways, huh. I, I did business with him for years like that, but he was always honest and fair to me. I mean, you know, if he said he was going to do something, he always did it. So I had a good connection for a while. So I got to meet some interesting people in Columbia just by hanging out with him, but his name was... Things have changed so much. Carlos Rivas Leader was his name. And he was arrested in New York City for stealing a car and driving pot from New Jersey to New York, a couple pounds, and that's when I met him when he was in the... And he was always telling me, Yeah, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to be the biggest drug lord ever in Colombia. And I kept saying, Carlos, shut the fuck up, man. I don't want to hear all that shit. You're in here for a few pounds of pot and a stolen car, man. You know? And then he... Carlos... Got, Carlos who? Rivas Leader. Rivas Leader. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and then he, he became one of the biggest drug lords ever. And then he became the biggest snitch of everybody. So, yeah. What about the twins, though? The, those twin brothers. They were freaking crazy as hell. Uh, what were their names? Damn. What? Uh, they were, uh, but they were connected to Pop, Pablo Escobar. Well, I don't know. They were it was like, a pretty closed they, world for rivals. a minute in that area. Were, Everybody kind of knew everybody. Rivals. You know, it was kind of like really connected that way. So... I mean, all these mom and pop operations that said they were this and that. It's like the guy's story written up there in Massachusetts where he supplied all the cocaine. No, you didn't, you lying motherfucker. There was a hundred people out there bringing it in. I mean, the mom and pop operations really accounted for a lot of dope coming into the country. So, <clears throat> the movie Snow could That's be applied to 120 about. different people. He, he what? The movie Snow yeah, could be yeah. applied to 120 different people. Oh, that easily, so old. easily, he easily. Just wrote a good book, and he was a snitch too. He ran it on everybody. That was such an old movie. <coughs> yeah. yeah, if you get yeah. back to to some of the up to date movies, yeah. they're pretty much on the money. Yeah, stories are written by people and they're made into movies and Hollywood changes it and twists yeah, it. Yeah, they and, twist it around. So, you know, you don't really know what's real, what ain't, right. how exaggerated it really was. But Carlos... But the, the basis of the story was there. Right, he bought an island called Norman's K off Miami. I've been there several times and it was just a big runway and a boat dock and a bunch of houses and, <laughs> and they'd land there and split up, fuel up, and crank on out the road with whatever they had there, and it was a big party place. I mean, he had it going on there for quite a while, and of course the cops all knew what was going there, but they just couldn't stop it. I mean, it was just, that's the way it was back then. It was pretty wide open. They were onto a lot, but there was just so much of it coming in. Back when pot wasn't grown in America, when it was just coming out of Colombia and Mexico, and the Colombians controlled the fucking freight train through Mexico, so they got their pot up here before the Mexicans did. So that created the Mexican cartels mm -hmm. and mobs. But they've been the around. Well, yeah, but they've been around since the 1800s. I mean, 